Have you ever found yourself late at night researching your symptoms online, desperately trying to understand if you may have a disease? But if you think about it, what exactly is a disease? It is basic human nature to want to understand what may be happening in our bodies when a change occurs. How does it occur, and why does it occur? Biomedical research seeks to address these questions through comprehensive experimentation, with the ultimate goal of developing new treatment approaches for patients. It takes about 12 years to get a potential treatment from a lab to become available to the public. But when we think about the research that goes into treating a disease, most people envision white lab coats doing things that most people don't understand. But it's not quite as complicated as it may seem. In reality, we're just looking to better understand human health as a way of helping others live their best lives. But where do we even begin? In research, it all starts with a fundamental question. This curiosity-driven science that we have today leads to the treatments that we have tomorrow. But we still remain far away in the fact that so many people are suffering. And as it stands right now, I would like to suggest that we are missing a key piece to our understanding. Have you ever been to the doctor's office and just felt like the doctor didn't understand you? This goes both ways. How many times have you been to the doctor's office and just felt like you didn't understand the doctor? Well, one of the obstacles that we have in understanding medical conditions, so that we can come up with effective treatments, is including the patient's perspective. While biomedical research is centered around creating meaningful differences for patients. The patient perspective is often not included at the laboratory bench top. Patients are encouraged to participate as a human statistic in a clinical trial, but they're often not members of research teams. In recent years, there's been an increase in participation from patient advocates who consult with doctors and scientists, but this typically falls at the end of the research process, such as in clinical trial design and approval. Moreover, people who are in the scientific workforce pursuing research to understand disease likely have not experienced those diseases themselves. In other words, the patient is the one experiencing this. So, shouldn't we value the input from them just as much as we value the knowledge that we've gained from our education? There's a fundamental disconnect here, and I would like to change this. I am a regenerative sciences PhD student at the Mayo Clinic, and I am especially interested in understanding neurodegenerative diseases like multiple sclerosis or MS. Specifically, I have interest in restoring vision in patients who have lost it as a result of the disease. And this is a common disease most of us know that disrupts the communication between the brain and the spinal cord with the rest of the body. It destroys the protective covering around nerves, known as the myelin sheath, which is depicted in this illustration, with the healthy nerve on the top and the damaged nerve on the bottom. Notice how quickly we move our hands when we touch something dangerous, like a hot stove. We don't even have to think about it. So that's our pain receptors in our hands. Transmitting signal up our arms to our spinal cord, which then signals to our brain about the pain. Our brain, in turn, sends instructions back to the spinal cord, which then gets sent down our arm to our hand, and we move it, all in a matter of milliseconds. You don't have to consciously think about pulling your hand away, because by the time that you did. You would probably be experiencing tissue damage. So let's think of the myelin sheath like the cord of a lamp. It insulates the underlying wires. If I took a knife and I repeatedly scraped at the cord of this lamp, if I were to cut deeply enough, when you go to plug the lamp in, the light bulb may not illuminate, or you could end up across the room. 
It's a big problem. Disease is a big problem. And this is why we need to be asking new questions. So, why do I care so much about all of this? Well, although you cannot tell by looking at me, I myself am a patient who was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis when I was 11 years old. This is a rare form of this common disease. In fact, it is estimated that there are less than 10,000 children in the world living with MS. And as a result, I was rendered visually impaired within five years of my diagnosis, leaving me with blindness in my left eye, just around the age that most children are getting their driver's license. But, nevertheless, I believe that I've been given a new set of eyes to see with. Because for me, MS could not have happened to a better person. I sought out opportunities to study MS in a laboratory, and I became a research scientist the moment that I could. My freshman year of college, when I was 18 years old, I began to learn the relevant laboratory techniques to investigate this disease, and from there, was then able to route my prior questions in a more applicable way. So my questions went from, for example, what is happening in my body, to what are the types of cells involved during an immune system attack? And my role in lab was to compare brains with and without MS to look for changes. I humbly believe that I provide a unique perspective to this field, as I saw MS through the eyes of a child. This has provided insight into so many things, from how doctors explain their results, to how scientists communicate their findings, to how families cope. It's personal for me, and it's personal for all of us battling with any disease. But one thing's for sure. As a scientist, I define the disease. The disease does not define me. Thank you, thank you. I have been afforded this wonderful opportunity to research what I experience, and I am gaining the knowledge and training to investigate this disease. However, I already have access to an extensive database of what the disease can do to the human body. I have access to information that researchers and clinicians do not have. A daily database of what the disease does to the body, does to the mind, does to the eyesight, does to the touch, and does to the feeling. So, I'm going to integrate these tools with my personal daily experiences to actually reach findings that we have never reached before. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Because I live with what I study. In fact, I am what I study. So as a patient with MS and a biomedical research scientist of my own disease, I would like to establish and define a new concept, a patient research scientist. So these are patients who are equipped with the laboratory skills to apply new questions towards the ongoing research of their disease. And these are likely questions that are not currently being asked. But in a field that many rely on, every perspective matters. I propose the funding initiatives that will aid in the recruitment and training of patients into the scientific workforce. And we are currently working on establishing this as an initiative. I have created an organization of patient research scientists, such as myself, that you can check out at this website, patientscientists.org. It is my hope that, in years to come, each lab is equipped with a patient research scientist, just like they're equipped with microscopes, beakers, research faculty, you name it. And we will ever expand on a perspective that dramatically changes the dynamics of biomedical research for every disease that is impacting the loved ones that you know. Thank you. <laughs>
Thank you. Thank you so much.